Which star is it? Tom DeLuise. Karen Valentine. Vincent Price. Suzanne Pichette. Burt Reynolds, Carl Reiner, Wally Cox, Hope Lang, or Paul Lynn, all in the Hollywood Square. And here is the master of the Hollywood Squares, Peter Marshall. Thank you, Kenny, and a very good evening. Welcome to the Hollywood Squares. Hello, stars. Welcome once again, everyone. Welcome. Opponents of fluoridated water argued that too much fluorine in a person's system can cause an uncontrollable desire for sex. Hey, Culligan Man! Paul <laughs> 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 in. Put Paul in. He's breaking up already. Say, in literature, <laughs> what is it that writes and having writ moves on? A meter maid. <laughs> <laughs> the hand of fate. Uh, I'll disagree. The Why? moving finger. <laughs> you disagree. Put an X there. Secret Square, around the world. Pontiac Firebird. Where is it? Oh, that's Mr. Funny. Paul Lind, please. To Paul Lind. What should you call the group of dancers in a ballet? <laughs> <laughs> Silly savages. <laughs> Corde de ballet. Corde de ballet, that's right, that's that, correct. Yes, that's, that's right, that's right, yes, up to the circle there. Okay, back. Uh, yes, I think um, Paul in the block. In what state was Abraham Lincoln born? In what state? Mm -hmm. well, like all of us, naked and screaming. <laughs> <laughs> Paul, you got a 43 on the laugh meter. That means you win the trip around the world. <laughs> uh, uh, Illinois. I agree. Kentucky. X does not get the square. We'd give you three in a row. The third one you must earn yourself. Several ways to win it. Take a look. I didn't know that. Paul Lynn to win. All righty. Why was Daniel thrown into the den of lions? Or jaywalking in Jerusalem. <laughs> <laughs> Must have been working at Metro. <laughs> For trying to overthrow Herod. I disagree with you. Because he refused to worship pagan gods, X gets the square $300 for Chuck Boyle. gets that square. Judy, you're looking for uh, a three in a dollar. Yes, I am. Paul Lynn. All righty. <laughs> the famous short story, The Gold Bug, was written by what famous author? It's gotta be Charles de Gaulle. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think the scary guy, Edgar Allan Poe. I'll disagree. He's right. X oh. gets the square. Oh. Break for you, Chuck. Uh, Connie Stevens. <laughs> Who played Anne Margaret's father in the film Bye Bye Birdie? Oh, dear. I remember him very well. <laughs> Dick Van Dyke. <laughs> you got a laugh? Uh, yes, uh, I disagree. You know who it was? Take a guess. Not Dick Van Dyke. I no, it wasn't. <laughs> it was uh, Paul oh, Lynn. Oh, yes. <laughs> Sorry about that, Paul. Right. <laughs> Paul also starred in the Broadway production with uh, Dick Van Dyke, Sheeta Rivera, Dick Godier. And Margaret's mother? Uh, father! <laughs> Abby, I'm going to... Abby Dalton! I can't take you anyplace. All right, uh, Judy. Uh, 
Paul, if you cook chunks of onions, uh, tomatoes, peppers, and lamb all together on a long stick, what would you call it? I heard that, but it's Omar Sharif. <laughs> <laughs> you would have Omar Sharif? Oh, well done. Can I hear the ingredients again? Don't help me. <laughs> yes, onions, tomatoes or tomatoes, uh, wherever you're from. Peppers, lamb all together on a long stick. What would you call it? A shish kebab. I agree with you. A shish kebab. Circle this. Yeah, I'm just passing the audience not to uh, yell out the answers in the block. Right? Paul in the block. You're standing on your big gun and hanging five while you look for a dumper. What are you up to? <laughs> <laughs> Go. Worse. Uh, I, I, th I think that's that killer sport surfing, I think. You're correct. <laughs> it's I'll a agree killer sport. Yeah, sporty hit circle right there. <laughs> Joey Bishop. Joey Bishop. Uh, <laughs> Paul in. All righty. Paul, Socrates, Plato, and Aristotle all lived in what city? Um, Athens. <laughs> I agree. Uh, X gets the square, and we'll be back with more of the Hollywood Squares. <laughs> All righty. <laughs> How many men on a hockey team? About half. including the puck. <laughs> six. I agree with you. Uh, you, sir, have an X and $600. Very good. Thank you, sir. I'll have to go to Paul in the block. Paul in the block from left to right. The staff of life has been with us for ages. What is the staff of life? Yogurt. No, I, I, I think it's uh, the staff of life is bread. I agree with you. He is correct. Put the circle there. Right. <laughs> Try and read it. Paul Lynn. Hi, Paul. Hi. The old childhood chant, when you sing Lady Bird, Lady Bird, Fly Away Home, why should she go? Because Lyndon wants his chili. <laughs> I think the, the house is on fire. I agree. He's right. Put an X there. <laughs> so that's to to Paul in the block from left to right. The newest best selling album by this top star is entitled To Russell, My Brother, Whom I Slept With. Who's the recording star? Little baby Rosemary. Oh, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> I no. never slept with my <laughs> I, I think that's uh, uh, Davy Jones, the one of the monkeys. I'm going to disagree. Bill Cosby. Put a circle there. She disagreed. Good story. John? Bill Bixby. Who is required to be kind, obedient, cheerful, and clean? <laughs> Idiots. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> may I hear that again? Yeah. Uh, Required to be kind, obedient, cheerful, and clean. Who is? Uh, Boy Scouts. That's right. Reverend Thrifty, too. Plus helpful, brave, courteous, <laughs> and loyal. You forgot those. Put a circle there. John? Thank you. But you have to be prepared. Call in, please. Paul? Uh, if you were a knight of the sun, a grand inspector, inquisitor, commander, or a sovereign grand inspector general, to what organization would you belong? The Luxembourg National Guard. <laughs> <laughs> I, um, I think, I think those strange fellows, the odd fellows. <laughs> I agree. The Mystic Knights of the Sea, the Masons, a marvelous organization. You agreed he was wrong. X gets the square. Charlie Weaver. Paul in. 
If someone was dressed in soup and fish, what would they be wearing? <laughs> soup and fish. Friday's supper. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I, I think that's a, 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 a weave like a herringbone. Um, I'll have to agree. White tie and tails. Oh, Put on no. the top hat. X gets the square, Josh. Charlie Weaver again. Boy, that's fast. Oh. Uh, please flip the coin backstage. You'll start the game. Good luck to both of you and pick a star, Judy. I have a hunch. Mr. Paul Lynn, please. No, no. but we'll go to the Paul Lynn questions <laughs> here and find out. <laughs> if you were awarded a B.E.E. -E at college... What would you specialize in? I'd be a honey maker. <laughs> uh, I think I ought to be an economist, e economics. I disagree. Electrical engineering. Oh, well, I'm glad I wasn't there. <laughs> <laughs> Let's try Lauren Green, all right? Finally, hasn't had a chance to play yet. Paul Lynn has a chance to play right now, and this is for $600. In the Mother Goose rhyme, Goosey Goosey Gander, the goose wandered into his lady's chamber where he met a man. What did the goose do to him? He peopled him. He manned him. Uh, <laughs> now, Abby, control yourself. Or contain yourself. Would you run that once? Sure. <laughs> and the mother goose rhyme. I love to do beautiful phrases like this. Goosey, goosey gander, the goose wandered into his lady's chamber where he met a man. What did the goose do to him? Frightened him. I disagree. Why? <laughs> <laughs> he threw him down the stairs. $600, John Kemper. Very good. <laughs> Paul in to block. Paul in. So we'll go to the Paul in questions here and see what we come up with. What is the green, uh, the green eyed monster? Jealousy. Ja right. ja, dear. I'm sorry. I have to destroy I am the. I'm so sorry too. I know. Well, that's all right, dear. Once in a while, we blurt these things out. That does happen. We'll just get rid of this question and go with Was another. Was it right? One. Yes. Jealousy is the green eyed monster. Big tall fella. You can't miss him. I'm so sorry. <laughs> okay, Paul. Listen. It's very important right now. Very important. The Quiet Man was one of John Wayne's. Few non Western pictures. Where did the film take place? A public library. <laughs> uh, it took place in, uh, in Ireland. The Quiet Man? Yes. It took place in Ireland. I'm going to disagree with you. Oh. Oh. Here the moons again in Ireland. X does not get the square. Would give you three in a row. The third, and you must earn yourself a Jaja. Ja, don't be I upset. Am, I never done that in my life. That's all right. You always said that. I never done it in my life. <laughs> now don't you be upset. You know what's real funny about that? Jaja ja yelled out jealousy, thinking that it was uh, a comedy j line. Well, I know that. Yeah, she <laughs> thought it was funny. She here didn't know it. You know what I mean? John, you are looking for nine hundred dollars here. You didn't know she was going to win. For two hundred and fifty dollars, Paul, a recent party. Liz Taylor had 1,000 little diamonds and 25 large ones decorating a part of her body. Which part? Um, her chin. <laughs> uh, Twenty-five large diamonds and 1,000 little diamonds decorating one part of her body. Uh, what was on the other one? I don't know. Uh, <clears throat> Uh, I'll say, uh, let's see, 25, uh, uh, a thousand. A thousand little ones. Little ones. I, I 25 say, large diamonds decorating. It's either a belt or a choker. I'll, I'll go for a choker. A choker. I agree. Nope. nope. Her head. They were in oh. her hair. And she sparkled yeah. and glowed. Oh. We have an X there for Charlie yeah, McClain. <laughs> I'll go to... Paul, here's one on personality traits, okay? Here's one on personality traits. Is a person who sits with one leg over the arm of a chair likely to be cooperative or uncooperative? Is uh, this person a man or a woman? <laughs> um. It doesn't state, really, Paul. 
I guess, man or woman. But if a person is sitting there with one leg over the arm of the chair, is he or she likely to be cooperative or uncooperative? Uh, I would say uh, that's a very relaxed position, uh, very cooperative. Cooperative. I disagree. No, it's uncooperative, Paul. And uh, we have the circle. You disagree? And it is your turn, Charles. Open. Before Virginia Graham was a talk show hostess, what did she do for a living? Oh. Uh, she was a pilgrim. <laughs> now, I'm going to go with uh, something we found out uh, on the daytime, I think it was, uh, Hollywood Square. She uh, was a newspaper lady, a reporter. I agree. I'll, I'll get uh, an answer from Virginia. Is that true? In part. Yes. I, I, we can accept yes. that? I went to bed with the print. Is that it? All right, we'll accept that, and we'll put a circle right there. Charlie, go right ahead. There. Paul Lynn. Paul, according to Ava Gabor, I don't believe in them. They're unnatural. What doesn't Ava Gabor believe in? Uh, Raquel Welch. <laughs> <laughs> That means time is up, but we have to complete the question. Now, what, what, what does uh, Ava Gabor not believe in? <laughs> she doesn't believe in something. What is it? It just period. No, in regard to no one. Uh, she just, there's something she doesn't believe right. in. Right. Um, I don't think she believes in uh, overnight success. Overnight success. I disagree. No, it's bras, which is kind of an overnight <laughs> success. Bras? We, can't that. we have a circle, and that means the time is up. So Fall in. Uh, Henry Kissinger recently was quoted as saying, they aren't even sexy. What was he referring to? Uh, the uh, Joint Chiefs of Staff. <laughs> <laughs> and he was right. Yes. <laughs> they aren't even sexy. Yeah. That's what he was quoted as saying recently, Henry Kissinger. Sexy. Um... I'll say uh, 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 topless, topless dancers. True. True. I agree. No. Uh, the starlets he dates. Uh, the starlets and... Uh, they'll be glad to hear that. that. They'll, they'll be thrilled. <laughs> they'll be there. Jill St. John, if you know, she's not a starlet. She's a star. We she's have a circle there. And uh, Sharon, it's your turn. Yeah. For this game, Vance, good luck on the show. You'll start it off. I'll take Paul in. According to baby doctors, when a baby bangs his head against her uh, or his crib, it is generally just before doing something else. What? Uh, numeral uno. <laughs> Bangs his head against the crib. This uh, generally is the time uh, that he's going to... Uh, he does this usually right before he does something else. What? Uh, I would say start to cry for attention. I agree. No, going to sleep. It's his pleasurable way of going to sleep. <laughs> wow. Yes, that helps. That's why you think it's easy being it's a parent? Lonely, yeah. baby. With a circle, Amy Sharon. Amy Vanderbilt. Many Americans, Paul, uh, many American, rather many American magazines recently pictured Queen Elizabeth stepping ashore in Bangkok onto a carpet made of, made of what? 40% uh, Dacron. <laughs> uh, was it under Niagara Falls? What country? Uh, Bangkok, yes. Onto a carpet made of... Bangkok, they have so many uh, flowers. I'll say flowers. I agree. Flowers. Very good, Paul. With an X. Sharon, here's some cash. You'll start the round. Paul in, please. When the citizens of China want a drink of water, they always do something to it first. What? Uh, remove the shirts. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I know that, uh, I just read this the other day, that uh, the Nixon party, that all the water will be boiled. Um, so I think it must be true of the rest of them. I agree. That is it. They boil it. Uh, with the next, Sharon, your turn. Go right ahead. For $250, Richard Burton said recently that he gets up and does it every morning for two or three hours while Elizabeth Ooh. is still sleeping. What does he do? He surprises her. <laughs> No, but Richard Burton did say recently that he gets up and does it every morning for two or three hours while Elizabeth is still sleeping. What does he do? Uh, takes a nap. <laughs> uh, I would say, uh, 
<laughs> since he's off the juice, probably, uh, I would say jogging, some kind of exercise. Oh, exercise. Juice. I'll agree with that. No, he writes his memoirs, like, once upon a time, I met this lady. No, we put a circle there, back in the... <laughs> True or false, it is illegal in certain parts of Georgia for chickens to cross roads. <laughs> Case of Georgia versus Cocky Locky. <laughs> uh, it's true. It's true. I agree. It is true. Yeah. Wow. Right? All right. In the Bible, who was Naomi's faithful companion? Tonto. <laughs> Naomi's faithful companion in the Bible. Faithful companion in the Bible. Naomi's. Uh, Abraham. I'll agree. Ruth. What a circle, Gladys. <laughs> Go right ahead. <laughs> oh. According to Queen Elizabeth of England, there is something in the air near Windsor Castle which uh -oh. makes it unbearable for her to take tea in the castle garden. What is it? A flock of naughty pigeons. <laughs> <laughs> something in the air. Yeah. Something in the air that makes it impossible. Uh, probably a shedding of leaves. I'll agree. No, the sound of planes. Windsor is on the main flight approach to the London airport with an extra. Gently. Raquel Welch recently stated, it's a carnival atmosphere, but I can understand its popularity. It's a batchy, sweaty, funky life, but I enjoyed it. What is it? Uh, a choir girl. <laughs> <laughs> no, it must have been uh, her movie experience with the roller skating. I agree. That's it, the roller derby, and uh, an extra there. Betsy, Let break for you. Paul in, please. According to an official at Buckingham Palace, Queen Elizabeth is seriously thinking of letting her son, Prince Charles, do something very important. What is that? It's either her hair <laughs> <laughs> or Queen Juliana. <laughs> do something very important. Yeah. She's considering it. Considering it. Uh, to take over before... Uh, which is, you know, usually uh, the death, I think, to take over before she actually... To become king. I agree. She is considering abdicating in favor of her son by 1977, her silver jubilee. Very good, Paul. To Sir Will Francis, your friend. To the boss. The tin man wanted a heart and the lion wanted courage. What did the straw man want? He wanted the tin man to notice him. <laughs> The tin man wanted a heart, mm -hmm. and what, what did you say? The, the other? tin man wanted a heart, the lion wanted, wanted courage. courage. Yeah, the straw man, what did he want? The straw man, oh boy. Straw man, heart, straw man. Mm. The straw man wanted to be able to cry. To be able to cry. I disagree. No, he wanted a brain yeah. mm -hmm. for the next, and Betsy, it's your turn. Wally Cox. Ah, Paul Lynn, please. If the skin around your gold wedding band has turned dark, it probably means your system has a great deal of something. What? Uh, bigotry. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, it uh, probably means you have a high uh, acidity, uh, an acidity. Acid. I agree. That's right. A good start with the next. Betsy, go right ahead. Yeah, good. No. <laughs> President Nixon revealed recently, Paul, that he always keeps one of these in his desk drawer because it is symbolic of his favorite sport. What is it? Oh, a ski. <laughs> Long drawer, eh? No, I think they put an alley in for him. Was it for him? They're bowling people. I'll say a bowling ball. A bowling ball. I disagree. No, it's a football. Mm-hmm. Ah. <laughs> Betty? <laughs> Good luck here. <laughs> according, to, uh, according to French chef Julia Child, how much is a pinch? Five dollars. 
<laughs> but I probably do fried chef Julia Child. How much is a pinch? Now stick with me. <laughs> it's just enough to turn her on. <laughs> <laughs> How much is a pinch? A pinch is just enough that you can get between a thumb and your uh, 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 index finger. I'll agree. No, it's a half teaspoon. Oh, well, who cares? <laughs> <laughs> we can't for the next day, Lee. Uh, uh, well, no, you, you pick a star. Okay. Paul, in, Paul in to win. Paul in to win $500. Uh, Paul, according to psychologists, do most people think uh, people who have good suntans also have a lot of money? Well, I know Flip Wilson's rich. Sun <laughs> <laughs> tans and money. Yeah, three goes hand in hand. Well, I know that you have to be, well, of course, a lot of, you know, at unemployment, the tannest people are unemployed. There are, uh, you have time to go into the sun. I, I will disagree. I'll say, say no. no. I agree with you. No, it's yes. Uh, my no, kids are yes. both tan and they're both no, busted. Yes. So, uh, we can't, uh, yes, we can put a circle there. So a break for Betty Smith. We'll pause for this commercial. No, it's... Paul, the first one in this country was set up a little over 100 years ago. And it was shaped like an hourglass. Today they have lines across them and are shaped like rec uh, a rectangle. What are they? Oh, boy. <laughs> uh, real fast again. The first one in this country was set up a little over a hundred years ago, and it was shaped like an hourglass. Today they have lines across them, are shaped like a rectangle. What are they? That's true. Right. Uh, the weather report. I mean, uh, the barometer. I disagree. Tennis courts. Tennis and the number courts. of new courts is booming, <laughs> and we have an X. And uh, Betty, your turn. Buddy Hackett. Buddy Hackett to block. Paul Lind. Paul Lind to win $250. When a bullfighter retires, it's traditional to have a ceremony where something of his is removed. What? <laughs> his ears. <laughs> no, that's the bull, unfortunately. Yeah. Um, I would say his cue, the, uh, the, the hair braid. The pigtail. I agree. That's right. Very good, the hair in the back. And you have $250, right? True or false? Nylon is stronger than steel. But steel panties don't turn me on. <laughs> uh, nylon is powerful. I'll, I'll say it is. I agree. Uh, nylon rope, for instance, is about 50% stronger than steel cable of the same thickness. Interesting. With an X, you're on the board. Her own. Secret Square Game. Go right ahead, dear. Ben. For $250. True or false? The Niagara Falls were once located seven miles away from where they are today. Uh, yes, and it's a tribute to beacons. <laughs> uh, they'll like the plug up there. Yeah. Yes, uh, it is true. They are eroding that, that fast. I agree. And they are moving steadily upstream. Yes, $250. Congratulations, Denver. We're going to hurriedly clear the board here. Uh, Paul Lind. Lucille Ball received something small and gray from her hubby on her last birthday. What was it? <laughs> small and gray. Her last birthday. Lucille Ball received something small and gray from her hubby on her last birthday. What was it? Small and gray. Um, a cat. A cat. I agree. It was a poodle. We put an X there. Your turn, Denver. Pick a star. Uh, Marty Allen. Marty Allen. You know that Noel is delighted about the whole thing. According to Glenn Campbell, love to me is something you... You what? Purchase. <laughs> 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 Uh, love is something you... Love to me is something you... This is according to Glenn Campbell. Uh, you earn, I guess. You earn. 
I disagree. No, he said give, and in the act of giving, it always manages to work its way back to the giver. Oh, oh Glenn, we love it. X squared, two hundred and fifty dollars. No, no. Paul, according to medical statistics, a woman who is divorced, has a college education, and is 19 years old, is more likely to get a certain ailment than anybody else. Get what? A uh, heartbreak of psoriasis. Uh. <laughs> But according to medical statistics, a woman who is divorced, has a college education, and is 19 years old, is more likely to get a certain ailment than anybody else. What is it? Come on, wait. Divorced, 19. Mm-hmm. Uh, what? Uh, I will... <laughs> oh, 19 is what throws me. Uh, <laughs> I have no idea. All right, off the question to Cricket. Would you like this, dear? No. Okay, it's a headache. We'll go to another Paul Lynn question, right? In the original classic movie, Frankenstein, Dr. Frankenstein was supposed to do something very important the day the monster killed him. What was he supposed to do? I think a tonsillectomy. <laughs> <laughs> Supposed to do? Yeah, the, the doctor was supposed to do something very important that day. The monster killed him. What was it? I think uh, put the monster away. Put the monster away. I agree. No, get married. Get X married. gets the square. <laughs> no. Oh, time is up. That means. In ancient times, it was illegal to park your chariot in certain places in the biblical city of Nineveh. What was the penalty if you did so? They. Uh... Let all the air out of your horse. <laughs> uh. What was the penalty for illegal parking in the biblical city of Nineveh in ancient times? I would say the dungeon, probably. The dungeon. Mm, I disagree. No death. <laughs> uh, with a circle, Steve. Uh, Mr. Lind, is a jealous wife likely to be a better or a worse lover than a wife who is not jealous? Uh, I found him to be much better. <laughs> uh, a jealous wife, is she likely to be better or a worse, a better or a worse lover than a wife who is not jealous? I would say the jealous wife makes a better lover. I agree. Yes, according to psychological studies. Hey, these studies, I don't know. Uh, Carol? The United Nations. The United Nations has approved a plan in which you will be reimbursed for any damage to your health or your property caused by something falling on you. What? Uh, the Secretary General. <laughs> that pays you eight bucks. <laughs> and all you can eat. Yeah. Falling on you. Yeah. Insurance and in, for something? Well, the United Nations has approved a plan in which will, uh, you will be reimbursed for any damage to your health or your property caused by something falling on you. What? Something falling on you. Um, I will, uh, let's see, falling on you. Meaning the, the, their home, not inside the UN. Uh, oh. All I can tell you is what I have here. Something falling on you. I tell you what, uh, obviously, yeah. Paul is stuck for a bluff uh, or a real answer, so we <laughs> offer the question to our player. If you would like it, it is yours. <laughs> no, thank you. A very tough question, Paul. <laughs> Objects you. which have been launched into space. That's what Buddy That's said. That's what Buddy, well, Buddy, yeah. let's, he's, he's got that brain. What Not any say? object, communication satellites only that are good for the benefit of everybody. Oh, excuse me, Buddy. Yeah. See how much I know? Yeah. Uh, Paul, back to uh, your question. Give him my sex question next time. <laughs> Out of every 10 people, Paul, who are audited by the Internal Revenue Service, how many end up paying more taxes? Out of what? Out of uh, every 10 people who are audited, how many uh, end up paying more taxes? 11. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> oh, gee, I'll... Uh, paying more. I would say uh, seven. Seven. I disagree. Seven. Ooh, I'm With an X. Wow. This is Elizabeth Taylor's middle name. Is it Rosalie Rosamond or Rosalinda? Rosalie Rosamond or Rosalinda? Elizabeth Taylor's middle name. 
I'm trying to think English because she's English. Rosalie, Rosamond, or Rosalinda? I'll say Rosamond. I'll agree. That's right. We have the block. Carol, your turn. Paul, historians say that King Henry VIII had Anne Boleyn beheaded because she couldn't do one particular thing. What? <laughs> Convince Henry VIII he was Henry I. <laughs> <laughs> She couldn't do one particular thing, so Henry VIII had her beheaded. I and think Boleyn. it was giving him a child. I, I agree. Yeah, a son. Right. Yes. So you have another ex, and we have a commercial word. We'll be back. Paul in on one. All right. According to the Constitution, Paul, <laughs> what's the proper term for our form of government? At the moment, <laughs> shaky. <laughs> <laughs> or will you accept? <laughs> 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 the According to the Constitution, again. what's the proper term for our form of government? A republic for which it stands. A republic. I agree. We could accept no others except republic. Very good, Paul. In the circle. Joe, your turn. <laughs> Paul Lynn, please. Paul, true or false, right this very minute, you are being watched by something on the moon. Well, where was it when I had my series? <laughs> <laughs> Both of them. Yeah. No, 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 that's it. Rub it in. <laughs> but are you being watched by something on the moon this very minute? Yes, yes. Something. I'll, yes. I'll agree with that. No, you're not. No, none of us are being watched by anything on the moon. Put a circle there. You have circles all over the place. Now, let me explain. Yes, let me go with uh, Paul Lynn, please. Paul, President Ford has stated that the only way it will happen will be over my dead body. What? President Rockefeller. <laughs> The only way it'll happen will be oh, over I know, my dead body. I know, I know, fine. Uh, uh, gas rationing. Gas rationing. I agree. That's right. Another X. Nancy, your turn. It's okay. Does Billy Graham think it's okay to look at pictures of naked women? <laughs> yeah, but he can afford the real thing. <laughs> Well, uh, certainly there are nudes in religious pictures. Uh, I have to say, yes. I'll agree. He says it leads only to frustration or even worse things. <laughs> and he's wrong. Well. for the next day. Tony, a break for you. Paul in, please. Paul in to block. True or false, French police recently raided a house of ill repute for senior citizens and arrested several men in their 70s. And they were charged with loitering. <laughs> I, I, I would say that's true. I'll agree. One fellow was 77. <laughs> Kept yelling, vive la différence. Yes. <laughs> you have the circle. All right, it's your turn, Rick. Now, let me say something. Uh, there's a super square up there. It's either Earl or Jan. How are you going to play? Uh, I'll go with Paul in. That's the secret square, and you were searching for it, too, Rick. I saw you looking around here. Okay, this would be Secret Square number two one this evening, and I hope you get it. Rick, listen carefully. Paul, which of the following great artists was not, was not French by birth? Was not French by birth. Oh. <laughs> was it Cezanne, Degas, or Picasso? Was not French by birth. Cezanne, Degas, or Picasso? Oh, my, uh, see, there's a big mix-up about Picasso. He was either exiled. Uh, Degas, I know, is French. Uh, who's it? And Cezanne is... I'll, I'll say... Uh, I think I'll say Pablo Picasso. 
I'll agree. Yeah, I believe he was Spanish. Yes, by birth. You have the X. This is for $250. Paul, according to psychologists, can most people accept laughter during romantic encounter? I think they prefer applause. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't it amazing that that is our buzzer? Now that's put on a timer, so they, that is not done in the booth. That whoever blank it, that it always some opportune moments. Yes, it has no sense of humor. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, that is our buzzer. That means the time is up. And this is for two hundred and fifty dollars for Rick. So I'll go back to Paul in for the question here. Paul, according to psychologists, can most people accept laughter during romantic encounter? Most people. I, uh, I would say so, yes. I would disagree. It is yes. Thank you. We uh, put a circle there, and now we're going to add up the scores. Well, the best looking men in the world, Paul Lynn. <laughs> <laughs> Throw a false. Throw a false, guy. Yeah, one is. <laughs> the more money. <laughs> The more money you make, the more likely you are to take a drink now and then. Is that why Catherine Coleman slurs her words? <laughs> no, <that's> the, uh... <laughs> the more apt you are to... Yeah, the more money you make, the more uh, likely you are to take a drink. <laughs> I think... Um... I think it causes lots of anxieties. <laughs> well, time is money here. I'll agree. Good. Statistics show that people are less likely to be teetotalers as their income rises. You have a circle, Ed. Say, Ed time is money now. Again, I get back. Paul Lynn. All righty. Paul Lynn. According to parakeet experts, parakeet <laughs> experts, can a drop or two of bourbon be good for your bird? <laughs> No, after a drop of bourbon, I get me. <laughs> uh, uh. Can a drop or two of bourbon be good for the bird, according to parakeet experts? If it'll shut it up, yes. It, yes. Yeah, I expect it could. It can help him get over a cold, yes. Uh. All right, with a circle. Ed, your turn. Please, now, pick a star. Carol, tie game. You could blow. Paul Lynn. All right, that is the move. Yes. According to Dr. Thodeson, what's the what? major cause of itching? I didn't hear what you said. What's the major cause of itching in old folks? Oh, eating shredded wheat in bed. <laughs> what? Is this, can they Major ever Major cause of itching in old folks. What is it? Uh, I'd have to be, uh, you know, excessive dryness. Of Dry the skin. skin. Yeah? Absolutely. Sure, because the body is producing less oils. You have the circle. Add your turn. Uh, Paul Lynn. Paul Lynn to block diagonally. We all know that birds go south as soon as the winter chill sets in. Do whales do the same? Oh, I hope not. <laughs> uh, uh, Let's see. I know the gray whales do. Uh, my sister's a member of the Sierra Club, and they watch them go down every year. Yes, they do go south. I disagree. They yes, do. they do. Some swim as far as 2,000 miles to find warmer water. Let me explain something, Harold. Paul is not the secret square. It's worth over $2,600. Paul Lynn to win. For $250. According to a Stanford University study, who has a greater tolerance for pain? Young folks or old folks? I don't know yet. I'm having four more old people in tomorrow. <laughs> uh, greater tolerance for pain, young or old folks? Well, uh, you lose your senses in, in real old age. I mean, so maybe you lose that one too. Maybe it eases up. Maybe older people can take pain more than little children. I'll agree. No, it's the young. It's the young. We put a circle there. Dolores, back in it. Uh, Lynn. Paul, according to the National Enquirer, Richard Burton recently stated, I'm quite serious about this. I hate it. Honestly, I, I just can't bear it. What was he referring to? 
Uh, cholera. <laughs> uh, uh, I just hate it. Yeah. I I'm quite serious about this. I hate it, honestly. I just can't bear it. What was he referring to? I hate it. I just can't bear it. Mm. He's such an easygoing guy. Uh, one of the most charming people I've ever met. Uh, <laughs> I, I will say, uh, uh, he stopped drinking. Maybe he'd learned to hate it. I don't know. Maybe drinking. I'll say drinking. I disagree. No, it's acting. Acting. He's brilliant, but he doesn't like it. We'll have a circle there. Harold, you're... Yes. Hugh Hefner is quoted as saying, next to beautiful women. I think I like blanks best. What comes after beautiful women? A paternity suit. <laughs> um... <laughs> You think, he says, I, I, next to beautiful women, I think I like blanks best. Fill in the blank. Next to beautiful women, I think I like blank. Uh, uh, horses. Horses. I'll disagree. <laughs> Gadgets. Okay, uh, we have the X. Uh, Dolores, it's your turn. Paul, do... 250 million Hindus worship a peacock? They did until they ate it. <laughs> uh, they're eating everything and then, yeah. <laughs> uh, but do 250 million Hindus worship a peacock? Yes or I think no? they worship a cow. <laughs> so you say no? No. Oh, 250 million? Mm -hmm. There's eight billion there, aren't there? <laughs> Just maybe a small little town. A small little town. <laughs> you know how they multiply. I, uh, I, I will still go with. I don't. I, two hundred and fifty million. Then that's just the cow. No, 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 no. I disagree with Paul. Oh yes, they do. It's the emblem of Krishna. Put an X there. Okay, Laura, your turn. True or false? According to Kalama's Burt Backrack, people tend to start shrinking a little after about age thirty. Did you know that Rosemary is standing up in her kitty Oh, shut up. <laughs> pick, 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 pick. Uh, you know, I, that you start shrinking after 30? Well, you know that I used to be six eggs on the head, and I'm now like a quarter inch under. I think, I think you also got a little stooped. <laughs> Can you say it's true? Oh, yes. I agree. Absolutely. You settle a there. Okay, lady, your turn. Call in the block. Paul, according to the classic old song, it was there I knew that you loved me true. Where? Is it okay to point? <laughs> <laughs> No, according to the classical song, it was there I knew that you loved me true. Where? In your eyes of blue. In your eyes of blue. Patty? I agree. No, no oh. audience. Oh. Down by oh. the oh. old mill street. <laughs> uh, we have a commercial. We'll be right back. <laughs> well, the secret square up there, and uh, it's your option. I'll go with Paul Lynn. All righty, for tie game, Paul. Did any Shakespearean character use the expression, ride on? Shakespearean character, ride on? Mm-hmm. <laughs> ride on, ride on. I'd say it was near the love scene. <laughs> near the end of the love scene. <laughs> so you say, you say yes. I think she said, ride on, Rome. <laughs> he said yes. I'll agree. You'll buy that? <laughs> I'll buy that. In Julius Caesar, Mark Anthony says, I only speak right on. Yes, you have a next year tie game. <laughs> Paul, reportedly, the marriage contract between Aristotle Onassis and Jackie Kennedy stated that if Jackie did something within five years after they were married, Ari would give her $18 million. If Jackie did what? if she made all pro with the Pittsburgh Steelers. <laughs> 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 
But if Jackie... Let's hear what you would say. <laughs> Jackie did something with it. Five years after they were married, Ari would give her $18 million. If she did what? If she did something with the five years after they married, he would give her, her 18, $18 million. If 18 she did what? Yeah. Let's see. I would say... Uh, I'm trying to concentrate. <laughs> <laughs> and that's Bob Craig. <laughs> uh, I would say, uh, they have not had any children. I would say, uh, give me a child. I disagree. No, if she left him, he would have given her $18 million. But she's expected to get at least $100 million if he goes to that uh, big, big place in the, in the sky. sky. <laughs> yeah. So uh, we put an extra. You have the block wheel part. Experts who are repairing Michelangelo's famous statue, the Pieta were recently surprised to find something in the figure's left hand that they hadn't noticed before. Mm. What? Uh, oh, uh, a $5 win ticket on Goliath. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, I read, <clears throat> see, I read the, uh, I mean, I read the, um, the security that's around that while they're doing the work, and they said that the, Experts say you can won't be able to tell at all that it was ever harmed. Yeah, but what what did they they found something in the figure's left hand that they hadn't noticed before? What was it? I didn't read that. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, I that that she had in her left hand. Mm -hmm. They found something in the figure's left hand that they hadn't noticed before. Uh, a ring. A ring. Uh, I'll disagree. No, the letter M. Presumably, uh, presume, well, uh, from Michelangelo, I guess. Yes, uh, Virginia, your turn. Paul of Locke, I might have got a bird to win. They keep forgetting. Paul, does, uh, does Raquel Welch like milkshakes? She doesn't have much choice, does she? <laughs> uh, let's see. Uh, uh, she's probably one of these ladies can, that can, you know, eat anything and not gain. And, uh, she probably does. She loves them. Says yes. I'll agree. Uh, yes, and we have an X there. Your turn, Virginia. Go right ahead. Paul, according to the World Book, what's the main thing we get from Honduras? You got it too. <laughs> Their main, uh, our main import from Honduras. Honduras, man, part. Uh, I will say, uh, sh uh, sugar or pineapple, uh, something tropical. I am not up on the Honduras. I'll go, f I'll go with, uh, sugar. Sugar. I'll disagree. Banana. 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 Yes, the banana. The public with a circle. Okay, Bruce. Hold in in the center. Paul, what television show tells us the story of a black family who moves to Manhattan and takes up residence in a fancy high-rise apartment building? Oh, um, uh, <laughs> I, you know, uh, it's Marvel. The Jeffersons. The Jeffersons. Absolutely correct. Absolutely correct. Yes, you have the block, and it is your... Davidson, no, Paul Lind, please. Paul Lind. All righty, this is for the block. Paul, speaking about her hubby, Carlo, Sophia Loren recently stated... He loves it. He really loves it. And of course, it's good to love it. But there can be too much of it. What is it? <laughs> oh, well, it's either pasta or her. <laughs> <laughs> he loves it. Of course, it's, it's good to love it. But there can be too much of it. What is it? Um, I'll say money. Money. Uh, I'll disagree. Work. You have the X. Okay, Patty, your turn. Roddy. Friends. Oh. Doris Day's Beverly Hills Neighbors. Paul recently made Doris get rid of some things she was quite, quite fond of. Ooh. What? Her musical hide a bed and three Korean acrobats. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> uh, I disagree. You think this is oh, no. You disagree? <laughs> Did you disagree? <laughs> <laughs>
Um, made her get rid of something. Yeah, Doris Day's Beverly Hills neighbor said she would have to get rid of something. She was quite fond of it, too. Well, she has many, many dogs. I don't know of any other animal she has. I'll, uh, I think there's, you know, restriction. I think you have to, can only have three and not be a kennel. And uh, I think it's all of her dogs. Dogs. I'll agree. She had to cut down from 25 to 5. Dogs, you have the circle. Paul, it's your turn. Lynn, please. Paul, true or false, there is a new bra on the market that squeaks in various musical tones. <laughs> the hills are alive. <laughs> New brother squeaks musical tones. True or false? Who the heck? I mean, for Halloween or something like that. <laughs> musical notes. Musical tones. No, a, a legit brazier. I just don't think anyone would want that attention brought to uh, <laughs> their bra. <laughs> I, I, I would say false. He said false. Falsy, you mean? <laughs> <laughs> not falsy, Don. No, not falsy. False. I'm going to disagree on general principle. <laughs> the hills are alive. Well, it's true. We have a commercial. Uh, yeah. Take a star. Call in, please. Paul, uh, what is the highest United States military award for bravery? Highest. Uh, <clears throat> they'll lend you $1,500 toward the home of your choice. Uh -huh. <laughs> uh -huh. Uh, Highest military award for bravery. <laughs> the Medal of Honor. Medal of Honor. Yes, I agree. Right. Well, the next. Okay, Mary, your turn. Robert Fuller. Paul, according to Shakespeare, Macbeth meets three women in strange attire who tell him that someday he will become what? Tony Orlando. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Mac, well, he, he, meets, uh, he meets the three witches. And they, uh, they, they, say they will tell him someday that he will become something. Oh, Thane of Carter. King. King. I agree. Right. That's it. Yes, you've got yourself $500. <laughs> Paul, and of course, Paul, true or false, studies at the University of Wisconsin show that you'll probably live longer if you love only one man or woman at a time. But it is all right to alternate. <laughs> uh, live longer if you love one man or one woman. Uh, yeah, probably true. I will disagree. Yes, it is true. Uh. Put a circle there. Or false. A woman was fired from a university cafeteria for failing to spread mayonnaise to the edges of sandwiches and being too slow with the sauerkraut. I'd just like to slap her silly. <laughs> <laughs> was, was the woman actually fired for that? I, I, yes, she was, but I think that they took her back. But she was fired. She was fired, yes, I agree. Yes, and she was rehired, I believe. But they put, <laughs> gave her another department. What an expert. Paul, according to experts, something strange happens when a person who stutters starts to whisper, what? He's twice as hard to understand. <laughs> uh, 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 something strange. Uh, you know, I, if you said sing, you know, so I have uh, actor friends that have stuttering problems, and when they sing, they have no problem. I'll go with that, though, that they, they suddenly don't stutter. Patrick? Uh, would you repeat the sure. question? Sure. Something strange happens to a person, according to experts, when, who stutters when they start to whisper. What? He said stops stuttering. I disagree. That is exactly correct. Yeah. Put a uh, circle there. I'll break for you. Stina, pick a star. Oh, your wife just isn't interested at all in romance. Now, will giving her male hormones help? <laughs> well, just how would you do that? <laughs> Your wife isn't interested in, in, in romance at all. Will giving her male hormones help the situation? Well, <clears throat> if you gave her female hormones, she'd go to the neighbors. <laughs> 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 I, I would say, yes, I think it would help her. I disagree. 
No, and the side effects could be miserable, like she could trip on her beard or something. <laughs> <laughs> All right, put a circle there. We have a commercial. We'll be right back. In song, she has a brow that's all furrowed and wrinkled with care. Who is she? Oh, Edie Gourmet. <laughs> <laughs> you know that Steve and Edie watch this show every week. Well, she's a good laugher. <laughs> <laughs> In song, she has a brow that's all furrowed and wrinkled with care. Who is she? Ma, there. I disagree. Uh, we a little more specific, Paul. Ma, there, McCree. Mother McCree. I disagree. That's Mother McCree. He was really oh, specific. Hit it right on the button, Mother McCree. All Are right. Are you kidding? <laughs> oh, I'm not kidding. That's I'm not it. Kidding. All right, put it next there, Patrick. Rose. Uh, traditionally, Pope Paul. Pope Paul does not have a big birthday to do. He doesn't. But he does get something special on his birthday. What? Kenny Williams, tell Pope Paul what he's getting for his birthday. That's funny. That's funny. Oh, what does the Pope usually get? He gets something special uh, on his birthday. That, that most of us get, I should say. Oh, I'd say a cake. A cake. I agree. It's baked, incidentally, by the nuns who prepare his meals. Yes, all right. You have the excellent moments. Your turn. According to his wife, what is Lawrence Welk's worst fault? Getting up in the morning. Getting up in the morning. Uh, he, he likes to sit on his bubble machine. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know the Welks. <laughs> Let's see, uh, what his worst fault? Yeah, according to his wife. He's, uh, he certainly is this. I'll say uh, he's too nice. Too nice. I'll agree. No. no. In fact, it's his temper, which he has worked the hardest uh -huh. to overcome. He has a very Ten bad temper, according to his wife. <laughs> yes. But he counts up to a one, a, a two, a three. Yeah, we put a circle there, Wilma. Please? Paul, before you play a game called Idiot's Delight, Idiot's Delight, you must have one certain thing. What? Monty Hall to hold the box. <laughs> what game is called the Idiot's name Delight. Of the game? You must have one certain thing to play Idiot's Delight. What? A, a game. Oh, game. I know the movie Idiot's Delight. Um, a candle. A candle. I agree. A deck of cards. It's a form of solitaire. <laughs> Put it next there. All right, Michael, your turn. Paul, Howard Cosell's lovely wife, Emmy, says that ten times a day, Howard says something to her. What? Is my hair back from the cleaners? <laughs> What does Howard say to his lovely wife, Emmy, ten times a day, according to his wife? Uh, I hear he's a very, uh, you know, good husband, loving man. I would say, I love you. I love you. That sounds all right. Good for Howard. And you have picked yourself up $250. Oh, your house just burned down. Who is probably more upset, you or your wife? Oh, I am. I'll miss her terribly. <laughs> uh, <laughs> well, the man has to pay for the loss if the insurance company sure doesn't. Uh, I, w I would say uh, a woman like possessions more. I think they would be more upset. The woman would be more upset. Yeah, I'll agree with that. No. <sighs> Women tend to keep their heads better in major crises, and it's the man. <laughs> now, let me ex explain. Barbara, that is in fact. How are you going to play it? I'm still going to go with Paul Lynch. All righty, for a tie game, Paul. According to Dr. David Rubin, what should you tell a 14-year-old boy who insists that he has no interest in girls? <laughs> Your slip is showing. <laughs> Uh, 
What should Ru Dr. Rubin, what would Dr. What would, yeah, what, according to the good doctor, what should you tell a 14-year-old boy who insists that he has no interest in girls? Which uh, um, bide his time. I, you know, it's, uh, the, uh, some people don't uh, fall in love till they're mature sometimes. Barbara? I agree. Yeah, basically, that's it. You say nothing, really. He still has a lot of time to work up to an interest. Yes. All righty. We have a tie game on that fight. Call in. Paul, this is for $250. Queen Elizabeth generally swings her umbrella behind her back, and immediately something happens. What? Ah, uh, Lord Snowden doubles up in pain. <laughs> <laughs> Take that near Nikon. Usually waves it behind her. Yeah, Queen Elizabeth generally swings her umbrella behind her back, and immediately something happens. What? Uh, maybe something happens. Uh, probably uh, uh, a tendon or um, probably a guard appears. A guard appears. I disagree. You disagree? Yes, we can accept that. An aide moves to her side. It's a signal, I would suppose. We uh, put a circle there. Cheryl? Oh, Paul Lind. According to Fred Astaire, his mother wanted him to do it when he was 35, but he refused, and he still hasn't done it. Done what? Moved out of the house. Still <laughs> <laughs> uh, hasn't done it. Yeah, his mother wanted him to do it, though, when he was 35, but he refused. He still hasn't done it. Done what? Uh, have his tonsils out. Have his tonsils out. I'll agree. <laughs> you bought that, eh? No, retired. He says he still has no desire to retire. And his mother says, quit, Fred, quit. We have an ex there. Arthur, a break for you. Secret Square game. Uh, Paul, Twiggy reportedly added an inch to her bust line while making The Boyfriend. Now, incidentally, that is a motion picture, ladies and gentlemen. The Boyfriend is a, is a motion picture, you see. All right, we'll try it again. Twiggy... Twiggy reportedly added an inch to her bust line while making the boyfriend. What does that make her bust measurement now? One. <laughs> uh, gotta be, you know, gotta retain like Charlie does. We had her measurement on the show once. Would she gain one inch? Mm-hmm. One. No, third. Uh, I'll go with uh, 32. 32. I'll disagree. He hit it right on the button. He retained. He remembered that, uh, yes. 32. She is now a dart. Uh, we cannot put a circle there. Cheryl, you'll have to earn that yourself. Uh, I'll take a call in to win. This is for $750. According to Zsa Zsa Gabor, she is waiting for a real man. And meanwhile, love something fake. What? <laughs> well, there, there oh, it goes. isn't easy, Fred. Let me explain. That means the game is up, but we must complete the question. So we'll go with this question. According to Zsa Zsa Gabor, she is waiting for a real man. And meanwhile, love something fake. What? Fake. Ah, uh, careful. Yeah, I, I know it. I was all ready with my answer until I realized you were here. Uh, <laughs> this is Zsa not even. I know, I know. Uh, for something fake in mm -hmm. the meantime. Uh, I'll, I know that she's gotten rid of all of her furs because of her uh, new love for animals. Not new love, but her love for animals. I'll say fake furs. Furs. Fake. Fake furs? Mm-hmm. I'll disagree. It's jewels. She wears only fake jewelry since her robberies. We have a circle in $750. And listen to this. Talk diagonally. Now, there is a prune tree growing in your yard. How do you know when the prunes are ripe? My grandfather comes over. <laughs> uh. I didn't know there was a prune tree. I, mean, I thought it was a plum tree. Well, they have plum trees, too, but there's also... There is a prune tree. Yeah. There is a prune tree growing in your yard. How do you know when the prunes are ripe? I, I would think that they would start to fall to the ground. Fall to the ground. Um, I agree. That's right, uh, because they are the plums, and they fall into those prunes and their stuff. And... 
You may. And so play your question here for the block. According to Ann Landers, should a wife ever tell her husband that he is a failure as a lover? Well, she should break it to him easy. <laughs> like, uh, you're almost as good as... <laughs> <laughs> What's the question? Should, he, should she ever, ever tell her husband he is a failure as a lover? Oh, I, not if she wants him to hang around, I wouldn't think. It says no. I agree. It is no. Does, how does she convey that, though? I mean, it's well, anyway. There are that. ways. There are ways. Well, okay. Fifty dollars, Paul. Is it especially difficult to train an ostrich to become a sheepdog? <laughs> Yes, they can't lift their leg without tipping over. <laughs> you mean the same function as sheep? Yeah, as a shepherd, in other words. A shepherd. Is it, is a it shepherd easy? ostrich. Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, boy, they sure could, you know, they could pass a sheep. They're so fast. Like sure catch them. I, I would say maybe they could. I'll disagree. Yeah, they make excellent shepherds, in fact. With a circle, Sheila, a break for you. Secret Square Game. Karen. Paul, according to the old song, I'd like to be your sister, brother, dad, and mother, too. Who are you? Oh, Cesar Romero. <laughs> 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 Old Butch. <laughs> I'd like to be your sister, brother, dad, and mother, too. Who are you? Um, I'd like to be your sister. I would say it sounds like a, uh, your lover. Your lover. I'll agree. No. Pretty baby. Pretty baby. I'd like to be your lover. <laughs> yeah. Karen. Karen Paul. Circle. Circle. Oh. Um, excuse me, put a circle there. All right. Now, Paul. Paul, there's a famous old, old saying around which says that a good one is worth more than money. A good what? Then how come they charge you for it? <laughs> a good one? Yeah, an old saying around which says a good one is worth more than money. A good what? Famous old... Thing. I would say, uh, oh, if you've had that luck, uh, a good wife. A good wife. I'll disagree. No, a good reputation. Let's put a circle. Uh, Roy, it's your David turn. McCullum. David, is there anything on earth that can flap its wings faster than a hummingbird? Huh. How about an owl in a forest fire? <laughs> We don't have these specifics, just is there anything faster on earth that can flap its wings faster than a hummingbird? Ah, uh, Tony Randall is the authority on hummingbirds, and I think he told me there is nothing. He said nothing. I'll agree. Oh, yes, there is. Many, many insects, for example. Yes, I'll what does Tony know? Uh, for the next there, <laughs> Lieutenant? Don. According to Dr. Spock, a good rule of thumb about when to first discuss the facts of life with your child is when he does something. What? <laughs> Uh, gets his Barbie doll in trouble. <laughs> I would think the first time is when he asks you. When he asks you. I will agree. Right, well, the next. Okay, Bonnie, your turn. John. In the agriculture, uh, 4 H clubs, you're from Ohio, you should know this, 4 H clubs, three of the H's are head, heart, and hands. What is the fourth? Hips. <laughs> <laughs> Head, heart, hands, and health. Health. Could you repeat the question? Sure. 4-H club. What do the H's stand for? We have head, heart, hands. He said yes. Right. Very good for the next. Money. All right. Paul, on television, on television, what does the bionic woman do for a living? Uh, she keeps Lee Majors from getting rusty. <laughs> Bionic woman. She has a profession. What is that? Um, I think she's a doctor. A doctor. I disagree. No, she's a teacher, Paul. Yeah, put a circle there. All right. Karen. 
what very, very popular song was originally titled The Bombardment of Fort McHenry. Oh, little town of Bethlehem. <laughs> What? what is the... A very famous song. It was originally titled The Bombardment of Fort McHenry. Yeah. <laughs> Fort McHenry. Uh, the Yanks are coming. The Yanks are coming. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> now, Francis Scott Key, remember the bomb... He, he wrote the Star Spangled Banner. Yeah, well, the next. Okay, Betty, your George turn. George Goble, please. Hercules. Hercules is famous for his 12 labors. Franklin Roosevelt is famous for his four freedoms. And Richard Nixon is famous for his six... What? Names for Judge Sirica. <laughs> Nixon's six. Six, oh, I'm no, trials, I think it was called. Six trials. I agree. No, that's the idea, but we needed crises. Oh, yeah, crises. his famous book, Six Crises. Can't put an extra. Now, Phil, let me just say this. And All right, for a block. At a horse race, can you tell one jockey from another just by looking at his pants? <laughs> <laughs> Only if he's carrying extra weight. <laughs> uh. <laughs> can you differentiate jockeys by the, by the pants? By the colors, yes. I... Disagree. Good. They all wear white pants. Their shirts and hats are colored to tell them apart. So, that's a good disagree. Put a circle there. George, um, Paul Lind. Paul Lind to win. Yes, $250. Mm -hmm. Paul, you've been awarded the Nobel Prize. Where will you go to get it? Uh, Kenny Williams, tell me where I'm going to get my Nobel Prize. <laughs> <laughs> go ahead, Kenny. <laughs> Well, first, we're going to stop. <laughs> uh, mm, I get these countries mixed up, but I think it's Sweden. Sweden. I agree. Stockholm, in fact, where the Nobel festivities are held. In $250, you see. Paul, according to the old song, the Bible tells me so. Now, you're an Ohio boy, and I know that. The Bible tells me so. What three things do you have to have in order to live successfully? The, the love of a woman, a good job, and the love of another woman. <laughs> <laughs> For the Bible tells me so, the letters. But according to the old song, the Bible tells me so. What three things do you have to have in order to live successfully? Jesus loves me. I disagree. Uh, that's how it starts, but it's faith, hope, and charity in, in the oh. lyrics of the song. <laughs> that's all right. We're the next, and even your turn. A spokesman, a spokesman recently revealed that Richard Nixon spends about three-fourths of his time doing something which he finds agonizing, agonizing. What is he doing, Richard Nixon? Oh, uh, reading uh, obscene skywriting. <laughs> um, uh, he finds it agonizing. He spends about three-fourths of his time doing it, though. Three-fourths of his time. I would, I would, I would probably say reading history. Reading history. I disagree. No writing his memoirs. Oh. Yes, okay, with well, the next, Eve, your turn. <laughs> According to doctors, now, Ralph here's a doctor, he may know this. According to doctors, can spending a night in a sleeping bag do anything good for you? <laughs> <laughs> I'll say, my den mother bought me a Corvette. <laughs> <laughs> can, can it do anything good for you, sleeping in a sleeping bag? Yes. Yeah. I'll tell you why. According to the Texas Children's Hospital in Houston, sore muscles, <laughs> of course they are, are effectively eased by the uniform heat of the sleeping bag. Well, put an X there. And, uh, Paul, on the debut of his television show, he walked out with his thumb in his mouth and said, I want my nana. Who did that? Was that the State of the Union address? <laughs> <laughs> the debut of his television show. He walked out with his thumb in his mouth and said, I want my nana. Who did that? 
Well, it sounds like Jonathan, but I don't know. I want my nanny. I want my nanny. Um, I'll say Red Skelton. Red Skelton? I'll disagree. Johnny Carson on his first Tonight Show. Yes. Okay, you've got... Jared Goble. Paul, uh, when he was a child, Paul, when he was a child, American frontier hero Daniel Boone was adopted. Daniel Boone was adopted. Who adopted Daniel Boone? The Indians. The Indians. I'll agree. The Shawnee wow. Indians. Yes, you've got the circle. Ralph, your turn. $250. True or false? A woman in Idaho has filed a big lawsuit because she was stuck in a restroom stall and couldn't get out. Why, well, that's false imprisonment. <laughs> She had to slip her complaint under the door. <laughs> um, she was in Stuck there. in this restroom stall and couldn't get out. Is a woman suing because of that? I, I, would, I would say yes. I'll agree to that. You've got yourself $250. Congratulations. Paul Landeblatt. Paul, has there ever been a nine-pound goldfish? Yes, and it starred in the Japanese version of Jaws. <laughs> Nine pound goldfish. <laughs> uh, well, they, uh, some people classify carp as goldfish, and I've seen them weigh that. He said yes. Yes, I've seen that. I agree. In fact, it made the Guinness Book of Records just recently. We have a commercial. You're on the call. You are listening to passion, passion music. In all probability, where are you? The Oxnard Conservatory of Electronics and Massage. <laughs> I've passed it many times. Yes. You're listening to passion music. In all probability, where are you? If you listen to passion music. I would say you're in church. In church. I disagree. Sure, it's the uh, sacred opera, usually oh. sung during Holy Week and only in church. Can't put a circle there, Ruth. Paul Land. Righty, for $250. A famous person stated recently, Paul, I have not been frustrated by being number two, and I'm having a great time. Who was it? Henry Weinberg. <laughs> <laughs> That's Liz's trick. <laughs> uh, this is, uh, That's Liz's ex trick, yeah. Well, this week. Uh, I'll say, I'll say it must be Rockefeller. Rockefeller. I agree. That's it. Two hundred and fifty dollars, Ruthann. Congratulations. Yeah. Now, Paul, what's another name for the famous Queen of the Adriatic? <laughs> Could be so many people. <laughs> <laughs> Another name for the famous Queen of the Adriatic. Um, I, I'll say Greece. Greece. I disagree. No, Venice, Italy, Venice. With a circle, George, your turn. Hal Linden, star, my friend. Paul in, please. No, I would have gone to Sandy to block. This may work out. I'll give you two lines. You give me the title of the famous song. You must remember this. A kiss is just a kiss. A sigh is just a sigh. Da 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 with a hearing aid. Yes, but he actually raised 150,000. <laughs> uh, I agree. Well, I tell you, I'm, I hope it's true, and if it is, I'm gonna call him because Harry's losing his hearing. Uh, and if that's possible, I'd sure spend it. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> I agree. Uh, yeah, it's true. Jerry loves that dog, just like you love old Harry McAfee. Okay. Paul, true or false, gypsy folklore. Gypsy folklore says 
that God created man by baking him in an oven. Looks like you were overcooked. <laughs> <laughs> Is that true or false? <laughs> oh, you'll have to give it to me again. Oh, okay. <laughs> Gypsy folklore says that God created man by baking him in an oven. True or false? True. I'll agree. That is true. All right. <laughs> Flip your turn. False. Eating a lot of cheese, cheese, can help cut down on how much pain you feel. That's why I never serve a salad with Roquefort. <laughs> uh... uh in other words, cheese can uh, cut down on how much pain you feel, true or false? Well, I... Nutritionally, uh, cheese is not that good for you. Uh, I'm going to say it doesn't cut down on pain. You said that's false. I think I'll disagree. It uh, contains a substance which makes you less sensitive to pain. Good to hear that. All right, you've got the circle, and Cliff, it's your turn. Jim. Paul, true or false, for $60, for $60, any tourist can have his picture taken next to the Golden Gate Bridge with a naked lady. And with extra $40, you get to cross the bridge. <laughs> <laughs> can you have your picture taken next to the Golden Gate Bridge uh, with a naked lady for 60 bucks? Yes. I'll agree. To show the folks back home, I guess you're having a swinging time in San Fran. You've got the circle. Cliff. Michael Lane. Paul. Superstitious people believe that stepping on something will bring bad luck. Stepping on what? Frank Sinatra's foot. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, oh, that, uh, 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 the crack in the sidewalk. Step on a crack. I agree. That's right. With a circle, then. Uh, Paul, true or false, vitamins can make you smell bad. That's why I prefer not to exercise with Jack LaLanne. <laughs> uh, some vitamins can. Agreed. Uh, B1 is a killer, yes. Okay, all right, you got the circle. Land your turn. Within two, within two, how many husbands have the three Gabor sisters had among them? You mean including their own? <laughs> <laughs> How many husbands, husbands have the, the Gobor sisters have had? Yes, combined, uh, total. <laughs> within two. Oh, within two. Yeah. I was hoping you're going to say within a dozen. <laughs> <laughs> see. Two. I see. Two, four. All the, all the sisters. All the not sisters just combined. Shashen, no. No. I will say, uh, a 10. 10. Agree. 17. Oh. Put an X there. Okay, pick a start. To a false. According to the Los Angeles Times, right before he died, Cho and Lai said, I shall soon be seeing Karl Marx. But first, Gene Harlow. <laughs> I, uh, he was certainly his idol. I would think that would be something. Yes, that is true. I agree. That is true. All right, All right, you've got the fall in to win. On May 20th, 1927, something historic began, which lasted 33 hours and 29 minutes. What? Wasn't that the year of the Dion quintuplets? <laughs> May 20th, 1927, something historic began. 1927, May 20th, which lasted 33 hours and 29 minutes. Historic. Historic. 27. Mm. Uh, I don't think Paul has a bluff for this. Jan, would you like the question? No. Uh, I, I bet you George knows. What is it, George? Lindbergh flew across the ocean. That's right, Lindbergh's famous oh. flight to New York to Paris. Actually, St. Louis to Paris. All right, uh, back to a Paul Lynn question. Paul, according to the Philadelphia Inquirer, what bad habit will your dog probably develop if you constantly feed him table scraps? He'll mm -hmm. want Thursdays off. <laughs> uh, 
<laughs> uh, oh, he will just um, uh, drive you crazy when you're having, uh, you know, your meal with your family or something. Begging. He'll be begging all the time. I agree. That's absolutely correct. Uh, circle gets the square. We have a tie game. Call in to block. Paul, if you stripped all the paint off the Mona Lisa, if you stripped all the paint off the Mona Lisa, what would you find underneath? A T-shirt. <laughs> I stripped all the paint In off. In other words, what was it painted on, the Mona Lisa? Oh, obviously not canvas, I guess, huh? Uh, I didn't say there was... I know. Paint. Well, uh, well, I'll just, I'll, I'll go with canvas. Canvas. I'll agree. No, wood. It's painted on wood. Can't put an X there. Okay, Paul Lynn, please. Paul, at what famous place in America will you find couples strolling arm in arm along Flirtation Walk and smooching at a place called Kissing Rock? Oh, Leavenworth. <laughs> Very famous place in America. Couples stroll arm in arm along Flirtation Walk. And smooch at a place called Kissing Rock. I saw that movie 80 times. West Point. West Point. I agree. I saw the movie too, yes. All right. With another circle. According to Glamour magazine, Paul, do people tend to eat more when the lights are low? What? Uh, do people tend to eat more when the lights are low? Do they tend to eat more when the lights are low, people? Uh, low. Yeah, do, do they tend to eat more when the lights are low, people? <laughs> yes, yes. And he said, yes, they do. I disagree. You play the game beautifully. Uh, people tend to eat less and more slowly in dim lighting. Uh, it is no with another oh, circle. I... All right, not in... Land. All righty. Paul, true or false, scientists say that a small child will believe the story that the stork brought him easier than he will how it really happened. What do you mean, really happened? <laughs> <laughs> Is that true, that he'll believe the story of the stork easier than the, the, the true story? If a parent tells him, the true story or the stork, he'll go, he'll take the stork story? Well, I can only go by, I, I was told the stork story and I believed it and uh, I thought it was charming. <laughs> so it's true. Oh, I disagree. It's true. Put an X there. Interesting. Major. Go right ahead. Paul in. Uh, Paul. Uh, Pope Paul. Paul. <laughs> Pope Paul VI recently stated that if women take it too far, it can pose a threat to their spiritual and moral integrity. Take what too far? A bus with reclining seats. <laughs> <laughs> if women take it too far, it can pose a threat to their spiritual and moral integrity. Take what too far? Uh, I would say I don't. I would say loose living. Loose living. I agree. Nope. Women's lib. Women's lib. Put an X there. Major, a break. You are a gorilla's worst enemy. What are you? A discount furrier. <laughs> <laughs> what would be the biggest enemy of a gorilla? I Probably man. Man. I agree. His only real enemy is man. Yes, uh, with a circle. Major? I'll go to Sue Sandwich. True or false, the United States Department of Agriculture has finally managed to develop a mini pig. I hear you can kick him a mile. <laughs> uh, as a football. Uh, uh, a mini pig. Yeah, I don't they know developed why they... a mini pig. I wouldn't know why they'd want a mini pig. <laughs> I mean, because you grow them for food. Uh, mini pig. Uh, I'll say true. He said, yes, they've developed a mini pig. 
I'll agree. I'll tell you why. For research, mainly, it's very small and uh, docile. You know, their, their skin is very similar to humans. They are very akin in many respects. With well, a circle, Tom, your turn. Vincent. You have several ways to play this. How are you going to play? Holland. Okay, for a tie game, $250. What well-known space-age word, space-age word, comes from the Latin for little chest? Joan. <laughs> <laughs> space-age word comes from the Latin for little chest. Well, I'll just go with, uh, you know, the first one that comes to mind, orbit. Orbit. I'll disagree. A capsule. Yes, we have a tie game. That's nice. <laughs> Why did Robinson Crusoe call his island companion Friday? Because Thursday was his day off. <laughs> <laughs> um, Why did he call him Friday? Why did Robinson Crusoe call his island companion Friday? I will... Boy, I don't remember for sure, but I would say that that's when they met. Was that's when Friday. they met on that day? I'll agree. That's right. You have the X. Okay, Jody. Oh, according to the new book of knowledge, the most important use of leather is for what? <laughs> to hold animals together. <laughs> 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 uh, what is the the most important use of leather? Gee, I I, I would say today it, it would be clothing. A little more specific. A little more specific. Leather. Uh, I, I uh, up, upholstery. Upholstery. Lee? I disagree. Uh, shoes, Paul. We were in the right. Yes, we had to be uh, shoes. You were right with uh, uh, with clothing, but we needed shoes. You have the circle, and Ken, it's your turn. Vin Paul, what does the name Jose Iturbi remind you of? How hard it is to get good help these days. <laughs> <laughs> Jose Iturbi. What does that remind you of? The name Jose Iturbi. It reminds me of Ampero Iturbi, his sister. A pianist. Piano. I agree. Great I agree. concert pianist. Right, you have the circle. Ken, your turn. I'm terribly sorry. Paul Lynch, sure. Paul, true or false. During the recent holidays, Rosemary, our own Rosemary, entertained on a cruise ship. Entertainment. <laughs> Not according to the reviews. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, she thought it was a trip. <laughs> <laughs> or I should have said tramp steamer. <laughs> oh! Oh! I wish we had a drummer. But I'm bummed. Yes, she did. She said she had the greatest time. She told us the other night. I'm going to disagree again. Oh, yeah, she entertained. She got a new act, and it's terrific. I mean, it's really terrific. And we're very proud of you. So we put an X there, and Ken, it's your turn. Um, Paul N. Paul, true or false, women smokers in Uganda traditionally put the lit end of the cigarette into their mouths. Don't tell me what they do with their chewing gum. <laughs> Is that true or false? <laughs> the women put the lit end in their mouths in Uganda. Uh, yeah, I think Ugandans do that. Lee? I'll agree. Uh, the men smoke just the way we do, but the women do that. You've got two circles. <laughs> Ken, your turn. True or false? Kate Smith. Kate Smith is a Texas Ranger. But I'll always remember her as a big singing star. <laughs> Smith. Is she a Texas Ranger? Well, I know she was, you know, that baseball team that made her an honorary member, I think. Uh, yes, she is. I'll agree. An honorary member of the Texas Rangers. Okay, we're the next uh, book. Still more answers. Can a moose remember anything? Just enough to have more moose. <laughs> <laughs> 
You say that a moose can't remember something? <laughs> or is it mooses? I don't know why they didn't get it. What? <laughs> what? You say they can't remember. I didn't, I didn't know. I was nodding my head. I was saying, what is the question? Oh, uh, according to the book, still more answers. Can a moose remember anything, yes or no? Oh, yes. I'll agree. Definitely every kind of creature on Earth can remember and forget. All right, your turn, Martha. Paul, can a rock, an ordinary rock, can a rock be female? Can after 30 years of marriage. <laughs> <laughs> see, can a rock be female? Yes, yes, they do have genders. I'll agree. Rocks are neuter. No, unless you get hit by one. <laughs> yes. Put another uh, circle there. We have a commercial. Paul Lawrence Welk recently admitted that he loves it, but his audience doesn't like it. What is it? Uh, about pigs, knuckles, and sauerkraut. <laughs> he like he loves it. His audience doesn't like it. What is it? Uh. I bet he likes the modern sound. The modern the sound. Doesn't. I'll disagree. I'll need a ruling on that. He says the modern sound, which he's, we have jazz here, yeah. but we can't say modern sound, which is his favorite type of music, jazz. We can't accept modern sound. Very good with the next, Martha, your turn. Boys wore high heels to help them do one specific thing. What? <laughs> oh, I How dare you. What? <laughs> Cowboys wore high heels to help them do one specific thing. What? Uh, I'd say get on the horse. Get on the horse. I'll disagree. No, just ride the horse. That anchored them in the stirrups. Not to get on. Ride with another X. Martha, your turn. Harvest star, dear. Good luck, uh, Mom. Paul. Lynn. Paul. Nancy Sinatra says that her year and a half old daughter Angela is already doing something that Grandpa Frank Sinatra is famous for. What? Oh, yeah. she threw a diaper at a reporter. <laughs> <laughs> her year and a half old daughter, Angela, Frank's granddaughter, is already doing something that Grandpa Frank is famous for. What? Well, I would have to be singing. Singing. I agree. Sure. Good start with a circle. John, your turn. Uh, Paul Lynn. Paul, according to the old song, here we are, out of cigarettes, holding hands and yawning. Who are we? Roy and Dale. <laughs> <laughs> Good old Roy and Dale. Two, uh, two sleepy people. Two sleepy Too people. To fall I agree. By dawn's early light. Right, you've got the circle. John? Um, Paul. Paul. Uh, Ronald Reagan was placed on top of the list of 1975's 10 best... What? 67-year-old brunettes. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> is Ronald Reagan 67? Yes. Is he 67? He looks terrific. Yes, he does. Yeah. But uh, Ronald Reagan was placed on top of the list of uh, 1975's 10 best... Yes, best dressed. Best dressed. I agree. That is true. Yes, you've got the circle. We've got a commercial word. <laughs> All modern science can't really explain why... But if you go outside at night, stand on your head, and stare at the full moon, you will notice something unusual. What? Listen, in just eight seconds, rain will fill up your nose. <laughs> uh, uh, you stand on your head and stare at the full moon, you will notice something unusual. What? Full moon? Mm hmm I wouldn't go out when it's fall. Um, Let's see, notice something unusual about the full moon. Um, that it's not really, um, I was gonna say that it's not really quite round. That it's not really quite round. I disagree. No, it will look only about half as big as usual if you stand on your head and look at it. Oh, they can't explain head. why. Okay, well, the next, and Pat, it is your turn. The game. Good oh, luck. Man. Paul, Eddie Fisher. Eddie Fisher says that he hasn't had one for eight years, but he's looking for what? Oh, an accompanist who takes master charge. <laughs> Eddie hasn't had one for eight years, but he's looking for one what? Sure. I, uh, see, I guess it must be eight years already. I'd say a wife. A wife. 
I agree. A wife, yeah, that's right. Very good with an X. Thank you. Back. All in for the block. Paul, true or false, if you turn on a certain television station in Manhattan, a woman will walk up and put her lips on the screen, and you can kiss her. I like Barbara Walters better when she does interviews. <laughs> But can you do that in New York, in Manhattan? Oh, I'll bet, so. I'll bet you can. He says you can. I'm going to disagree. Yeah, you know, it's on cable um. TV. There's some wild things going on. In fact, uh, it doesn't stop with that, by the way. I've heard all these stories. Yeah, can't put an X there. Okay. Craig, you'll have to earn that yourself. <laughs> Paul Lynn, please. Uh, Paul, this is for $250. According to Hugh Hefner, is inflation a big problem in the Playboy empire? Infl inflation? <laughs> Did you see Miss February? <laughs> Uh, well, I, I hear he's in great financial trouble, at least the magazine is. Uh, so I would say indirectly, yes, it's true. I'll agree. Yes, absolutely. And you've got yourself $250. Great comeback, right? Yes. Paul, the average American gains 3.7 pounds after he does something. Does what? Buying dentures from a drugstore. <laughs> Thank you, George. <laughs> uh, what? I, I, I know what it is. What? And I wish I could quit, but uh, it's smoking. Smoking. I agree. I've gained 10, and it's been hard to lose, I'll tell you, but it's worth it. Anyway, it's smoking. Right. Okay, you've got the X in view. This is your turn. Lynn, please. Uh, Paul, Ann Landers has written a booklet titled How to Tell the Difference Between Love and What? A kidney infection. <laughs> <laughs> Ann Landers has written a booklet titled How to Tell the Difference Between Love and... Uh, sex. Sex. I agree. That's right. Hey, very good. Two X's on the board. Judith? I think... Paul? Sir Alexander Fleming, Ernest B. Chain, and Sir Howard W. Florey were awarded the Nobel Prize in 1945 for discovering something which has made millions, millions of people around the world feel better. What did they discover? Uh, Chinese underwear. <laughs> Will you explain that to me later, no, Paul? <laughs> but Sir Alexander Fleming, Ernest B. Chain and Sir Howard W. Florey were awarded the Nobel Prize in 1945 for discovering something which has made millions of people around the world feel better. What did they discover? The aspirin. The aspirin. I disagree. Uh, 1945, no, the penicillin. Penicillin. You've got the X. All right, Judith, it's your That's turn. All righty. Paul, President Johnson had a personal butler in the White House. So did Presidents Kennedy and Nixon. Does Gerald Ford also have a butler? Yes, he doubles as Secretary of Agriculture. <laughs> <laughs> Poor Mr. Butts. <laughs> but does Gerald Ford have a butler, President Ford? He's in such good shape, he probably serves himself. Uh, we've always heard what good... Sh uh, a butler. I, uh... I just don't get that image with him. I don't think he, he has said no. a butler. I agree. He decided it was a needless luxury. No, good for you, President Ford. Put a circle leg. CJ. Oh, that's why I was rushing everybody through. This, by the way, would be worth $50 to Allison and a total of $200 in cash. That is our buzzer, meaning time is up. But you did uh, choose a star. We can't finish the question. We all know, Paul, about the destruction caused by forest fires. But does anything good ever come out of a forest fire? Ever had roast venison? Do <laughs> <laughs> you know how many conservationists out there just fell right off their chairs? And we have a retired fire captain here. But oh. does anything good ever come out of a forest fire? Anything good come out of a forest fire? Yes or no? Boy, uh... uh. <laughs> Uh, uh, it's such a ridiculous question. I, obviously the answer is no, but probably the answer is yes. So? 
Uh, everything good come out of a forest fire. I can't believe it. I will say no. I disagree. They often destroy harmful insects. Uh, oh, well, uh, how fire ridiculous. That's fine. That's a fact. Put a circle there. And now we're going to add up the scores. gorgeous score. trees. Paul in. Hi, Paul. Everything okay? Uh-huh. All righty. <laughs> According to Coronet, Coronet, do most men feel uneasy when with a woman who has an extremely large bust? In other words, do most men feel uneasy when they're around women with extremely large busts? <laughs> Guess they run for cover. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think it's hard to talk. It's hard to look at their eyes. Uh, it's, uh, <laughs> it's hard to do anything. Yes, I think they are. He said yes. They're uncomfortable. Uncomfortable. Most men with women. I disagree. Yeah, they are. Most men become upset and scared. Uh, I don't know why. We can't uh, put it next there, Randy. You'll have to earn that yourself. Paul in. All righty. For $250, does Mark Spitz believe swimming in the nude helps you go faster? Well, it's easier to stare. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, <laughs> I think, uh, I think any additional garment or anything would be, uh, you know, cause resistance. Of I said yes. I think it would be faster. I agree. No. In fact, he says swimming suits actually improve freedom of movement. I think they shave their arms and things, but not the, no, they don't go nude. We put a circle there. You're back at it, Norma. All righty. Uh, according to the old song, I want to be happy, but I can't be happy until what? Till Johnny comes marching home again. The way. The way. I want to be happy, but I can't be happy until. What? You're, you're happy too. I'll agree. Yeah, I make you happy too. Very good. It's your turn, Norma. Dave Land. Paul? President George Washington once said, quote, I would rather be in my grave than in what? Grant's town. <laughs> <laughs> I would rather be in my grave than in, in the what? Um, I don't know. I'll just try to make some kind of sense. I'll say uh, most presidents truly hate war. I'll say I'd rather be in my grave than be in, in war. In war. I disagree. No, I'd rather be in my grave than be president. Isn't that interesting? Oh, that too. Yeah, okay, with a circle. Randy? I'll go for Paul Lynn. I don't blame you. Paul, according to the World Book, what's the most important single thing you should do to take care of your skin? <laughs> don't tell Jack Palance that you hate his dog commercials. <laughs> <laughs> the most important thing to do to take care of your skin. Jay, what? The most important thing, keep it clean. Keep it clean. That's an erase. I'm going to disagree. Yeah, you keep it clean. All righty. Put an X there. A break for you, Pat. John Day. Oh. Speaking of matrimony, Eddie Fisher Be my. recently said, <laughs> marriage kills love. Marriage kills love. And love kills what? 20 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Eddie Pitcher recently said marriage kills love, and love kills... Kills Taylor. <laughs> marriage kills love, and, uh -huh. love, and love kills... <laughs> marriage. Marriage. Ah, wonderful. <laughs> Chips in again. <laughs> No, I tell you what that is. That is our buzzer, ladies and gentlemen, and it's either worth $50 for Joanne or nothing for Pat. So, marriage kills love and love kills marriage. Joanne? I'll agree. No. Friendship. Friendship. Okay, we're going to add up the scores. We have two X's up there for you, Pat, and that means... Oh. The very first, the very first of the Ten Commandments says that you should not have what? The hops. <laughs> <laughs> the very first of the Ten Commandments says that you should not have...
We just lost Ohio, by the way, Paul. Is that hats? Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, first commandment. I, I honor thy father and mother. Bill? Thou shalt not have strange gods before thee. I, I other disagree. gods, right, yes. Thou shalt not have other gods before me. Yes, Bill, you know, you've got the X and read it, your turn. Fall in. All right. Uh, Paul, this is for $500. According to New Dawn magazine, is it uncommon for women to talk to themselves while romancing? I don't even have a bluff. <laughs> It's yes or no, Paul. I mean, uh, is it uncommon? Is it uncommon? <laughs> is it uncommon for women to talk to themselves while romancing? If they're enjoying it, I hope they do. He said, "No, it's not uncommon." I agree. Uh, both men and women do it. They, yeah, I'm sure they do it. Okay, you've got the X five hundred dollars. According to the Pittsburgh Press, Kate Smith did something on her twenty-third birthday that had a lasting effect on her life in show business. What did she do? Well, good American that she is. Um, she ate 412 apple pies. <laughs> what did uh, Kate Smith do on her 23rd birthday that had a lasting effect on her life in show business? Uh, I think she probably recorded her favorite, favorite song, uh, you know, uh, what was that? <laughs> well, you say her favorite song, When the Moon Comes Over the Mountain? That's right. Yes. yes. Um, I think she sang. Uh, uh, do you agree or disagree? I agree. No. She made her debut on radio, May 1st, 1931. Yes, her debut. Now, let me explain. It's so, a secret square up there. It's worth $5,500. The secret square is not Paul Lind. Are you a gambling man? Uh... I'll take I'll take Paul Lynn. All right, for two hundred fifty dollars, Paul. Do we get any heat from stars? Do we get any heat from stars? You will if I have to share my dressing room again. <laughs> <laughs> Who are you sharing it with, Paul? Big Bird and Oscar. <laughs> <laughs> That's right, you did, yes. <laughs> I think it's so many miles away. You mean, as human beings, do we get any heat yeah, from stars? Yeah, any heat from stars. From the stars. Do we get... I don't think so. This is no. I disagree. Uh, we don't get much, but a little. Yes, X gets the square, 250 bucks. Ron Snyder. Who is the super square? Clock. <laughs> 